friends, and welcome to The World Transformed. This program is your guide to an astounding future that lies ahead, one that will be here sooner than you think, and one that you have an important role to play in bringing about. At The World Transformed, we want to introduce you to what may be the greatest transformation of them all, the one that begins with considering and acting on the almost limitless possibilities that lie before us, and that ends somewhere beyond the reach of the human imagination. So when does this amazing future begin? Well, today is the day. My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-author, co-futurist, and co-host, Stephen Gordon. Hello, Stephen. Hey, Phil. How are you? Well, I am super fantastic. Happy Monday. How are you, my friend? Man, I'm doing great. Doing great. Just coming off the weekend here, and we're going to talk... Yeah. We're, we're going to talk about the animal kingdom just a little bit. We're going to talk about what we can learn from... Our friends in the animal world about, well, <laughs> not to put too fine a point on it, living forever, okay? Um, that's the... <laughs> you know, it's, it's been a while since we've had an all-animal show. Everything we talked about related to an animal, so it, it was time. It's, it's high time. It's high time we did that. And we've got an interesting lineup here, too. We're going to talk about a little bit about whales, a lot about a particular kind of rat, a particularly distinct-looking kind of rat, the mole rat, and then we're going to throw in some some Mexican salamanders right there at the end just to kind of just, just to kind of balance it out but but the show's called Whales Rats Salamanders and Immortality and of course we don't really talk about immortality on this program what we really talk about is extending life and living longer and what we can learn about doing that from some other species and it turns out we can learn quite a bit and some research is being focused in that direction and it's revealing some very, very interesting things. I want to start off with a story I just discovered yesterday, and it was on Longevity Facts, which is a really interesting, really interesting journal covering a lot of these kinds of issues. And the story is called Secrets of These 200-Year-Old Whales Who Avoid Cancer. And just a very interesting discussion of this whale species that uh, the bowhead whale lives 200 years. It's the longest lived mammal species that we know of and cancer is not a thing that happens with with these whales so that that's a that's a that's an interesting combo for us you know we live roughly a third of that time right and cancer is a big thing for us so right off right. the bat you say okay well what's different between us and these whales that we can that, that we can potentially learn from and that we can potentially do something with and of course one of the big differences one of the things they look at is telomeres, and we're going to be talking about telomeres throughout this entire program. We've been talking about them quite a bit lately on the show. These are these genetic structures, the length of which seems to be positively associated with continuing to live. That is to say, the longer your telomeres, the longer you've got. It is a drastic, ridiculous oversimplification of the fact, but but yeah, that seems yeah. to be how that seems that, to be how it works. It seems to be a contributing thing for sure, right? And yeah. Well, also the same study, they pointed out that uh, they seem to have, these uh, bowhead whales seem to have uh, genes, or increased copies of genes that are associated with reduced cancer risk in humans. So it, it may be one of those deals where they just, we have one or two copies of that, perhaps, and uh, these whales are sitting there with, you know, multiple, multiple copies of that, and that that may seem to help their uh, risk profile too, right? So... Yeah, exactly. Well, one of the one of the tricks around telomeres is that if you make them longer, there is this risk, there is this increased cancer risk for humans. So we get very confused genetically between whether we're making healthy cells divide and and live longer, or whether we're making cancerous cells do it. These whales seem to have worked around that somehow. So great that's worth some learned. study, isn't it? That's worth yeah. uh, another look. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's a good one. Bowhead whales, good example for us. And now we come to our our primary animal of the evening, okay? Our star our star of the show. And you got to take a look at a picture of one of these guys to really get a feel for <laughs> just how photogenic. Well, and, imagine a hairless cat but not as cute. Um, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, a buck-toothed yeah, hairless what... cat, not as cute. Um, the word charismatic comes to mind, right? When you look at when you look at these guys. That's <laughs> are you are you saying if uh, you had a blind date with a uh, uh, 
a naked mole rat. They, they would say oh, it's got a great personality. Oh, it's got a great personality. Absolutely. The, yeah. Actually, okay, I'll, I'm going to make one more reference to the appearance, and then and then we'll move on. But seriously, <laughs> you look at, you look at one of those things. If you just saw one, you would think, oh no, what happened to that? Right? That I, yeah, wouldn't that be some, your something's wrong with this animal? <laughs> what yeah. happened to that creature? <laughs> but but if if you look at it, basically, it's a rat that lives underground. It doesn't have fur to speak of, and it is a very wrinkly-looking, buck-toothed, I don't know, hairless rat. So picture it in your mind, or please check out one of the photos here. Not the prettiest creature in the world, but it is a non There's something beautiful mammal. going on with this thing, though. Absolutely. And Research has shown this is, and this is a big announcement from Calico Labs. This is the... Google property who's looking into making our lives longer and this is one of their first big studies that they've that they've published. They've been looking at mole rats over a three decade long period. So for thirty years mole rats have been have been monitored and tracked and studied and what's interesting is it seems that they don't age. So the standard things you look for in a mammal that would indicate aging is occurring Issues with metabolism, heart, bones, they don't happen. What's more, the females don't go through menopause. And you can have a 30-year-old mole rat female, and she can get pregnant and have a litter of um, lost kittens. I don't know what you call them. What, baby rats. Uh, she, <laughs> little, she, little baby mole rats, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That basically they seem to be there, okay, in terms of... In, in terms of having achieved this, one of the goals of life extension is this kind of lifelong, you don't fall apart, you don't get decrepit. Mole rats do not get decrepit. They, they keep going. There's this mathematical model called the Gompertz Makem yes. Law of Mortality. And you can look at the chart for humanity here. It's the chance of death by year. And, the yeah, and that's logarithmic. Uh, that, this is a logarithmic graph. And it's just yes. shooting up. Yeah, and it, it, it's showing at the end if, of life. If it human. even goes up. On, you know, it even starts to curve again, even on the logarithmic uh, scale. In other words, it's sort of an exponential of an exponential. Once you get uh, your chance of death after, say, age ninety, you're going to die pretty much at that. Point. Yes. Yeah. It, it shows and if you're. It shows the pro- the probability that you're going to die by year, right? And it tracks it over the mm-hmm. decades and. Yeah, I mean, what do you got there is you've got a very straight line going up. I mean, actually, I was interested just kind of in this in this extreme kind of dip, or excuse me, this extreme kind of straight up thing it takes somewhere between, looks like about age 5 and about age 20, the chances really go up after having gone down for a while. It's like getting born and making it through those, once you're born, your chances of dying go down, right? And then... Right. Once, once you're up and running, your chances of they dying. Call this, just, they call this a bathtub curve of uh, failure rate. And uh, yeah, every yeah. product, you know, if you buy a television, the chances of it failing are real high early, and then it has a normal lifespan, and then it gets real high later in its lifespan. The bathtub curve is what you're looking at. Well, it oh, turns that, out yeah. people, have a bathtub, people have a bathtub curve uh, failure rate as well. And uh, look, that's interesting. Know, we, like, the bathtub is right off the bat, and then after that, it's this very steady. Yeah, after that, it's pretty smooth. After that, yeah. But, um, and look at the twenties there. You know, between the age of say fifteen and twenty-five, there's a little bump there too, because that's that's the point at which we feel like we're we're immortal, and right. uh, we can't be hurt. Hold my and, beer. Uh, yes, the hold my beer. Yeah, years. exactly. Uh, watch this. Yeah, the famous last words of people that the, I say that. With a little bit of humor, but also uh, having seen it, you know. In my yeah, having life. survived so, it, let's face it. I mean, having, yeah, yeah and, and some of my peers having not. So then it kind of really, really gets smooth after that, doesn't it? So and, Yeah, uh, the, okay, so all that's to say is we're going to die, okay? <laughs> the, chances, <laughs> the, 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 the chances go up every year, and it's approaching a 100% chance of death. That's, you know, that's right. the top of the graph is 100% chance of death. And if you look at human data right around... Uh, right around age 100, it's just the line is just almost touching, right? I mean, the, you know, if, if if you're at that yeah. point, your chance of death is a, is r- roughly 100. percent There there are right. a few extreme statistical anomalies that make it a little bit past there, but once you average out the data, there it is. Now, yeah. 
The thing is, this chart does not apply to the naked mole rat. They don't have this, right? If you, they don't show a chart in the, in the linked article for them, but basically their chances of dying don't increase over time. So this mathematical representation of what we know to be true, but don't think of it in mathematical terms, simply doesn't apply. If you're a, I, I guess in the wild, Phil, it's just they live until they're eaten, right? Yeah, I mean, apparently. Yeah. So until or, something comes along and, and munches down on one of these guys, they, they stay at it, it would appear. I still well, I, in fact, this is, my big, this is my big question about naked mole rats, actually, based on this data. If their chances of dying don't increase as they get older, then why isn't the world just overrun with naked mole rats, right? They're, they're, they must they're, be they're, really tasty to something out there. You know, there must be a <laughs> well-established uh, predator situation. Yeah, I think it's got to be a, a combination of that, and probably they moderate their reproduction to meet their food supply. Right. So the other thing that could happen is either you're eaten or you don't get enough to eat, right? If if there if there are too many mole rats in their niche and whatever it is mole rats eat runs out, then this is not protection from dying of starvation or from being hit by a car or any any of those kinds of things as we often talk about. Even if you get engineered negligible senescence and your body's destined to live forever as a human, you can you can still walk out in front of a bus, right? Right. That, that, right. So what seems to be controlling mole rat populations is the equivalent of walking out in front of a bus. At some point it happens. But if you're a 27-year-old mole rat, and they apparently mostly live into their 30s, if you're a 27-year-old mole rat, you're as likely to be alive next year as if you're a 5-year-old mole rat. And it's simply not how it works for humans, right? If you're a if you're a 75-year-old human being versus a say 30-year-old human being, the 70-year-old is a lot less likely to be alive the following year. With mole rats, nope, that's that's not how it works. So that is a well, you know, with, with certain people like, for example, um, I, there are celebrities that you just keep you stop keeping track of because you've assumed they've passed away. And then Kirk Douglas shows up on a, on the show, right, on uh, on that award show, <laughs> right. And and I'm I'm not saying that to be snarky or anything towards a very glad long he's show. alive, of course. Yeah, yeah, you know. glad he's still with us. But quite yeah. frankly, I thought he was gone ten years ago because right. of his advanced age. Occasionally, uh, you see remarkable people like him that manage to uh, make make a hundred and and plus a little. You know, he's beaten a lot of odds to get to that advanced age. Uh, eventually, so, those odds catch up with all of us. So you got to look at what's special about Kirk Douglas, and for our discussion here today, what's special about these mole rats? How are they doing this? How is it that they don't age? They're also, it's interesting, compared to our bowhead whales, also cancer resistant. So that just seems to be a good thing generally. If, yeah. if I were going to lay out a principle for living a long time, based on these two data points, I would say, okay, one thing that definitely seems to help is to be cancer resistant. That... Well, ought to be and, pretty and here's, obvious anyway, I guess. But that, still, that's that's very interesting that things that live a long time are also things that don't get cancer. Those two go together. Well, if we do things to engineer ourselves to allow our cells to divide indefinitely, then uh, we create cancer in ourselves. And right. if we conquer cancer by attacking it on cell div- on the basis of cell division, we uh, you know we could kill the rest of the body, right? Exactly. Um, so it's we've got a bit of a catch twenty two in our own bodies, and obviously these animals have found a solution to that catch twenty two. Man, you talk about a, a target for research, and the naked mole rat uh, probably much easier to study than uh, th- than that big whale. And so I, I suspect that it'll be something that people will have in labs and and be and be studying very closely. Yeah, well, and I think there's a there's a lot to look at here too. There's a, there's a lot to unpack and a lot to think about. One of the things that comes to mind when I look at this is the mole rat makes a good case in point for one of the things we talk about around anti-aging is not so much increasing lifespan as health span. The fact that they live five to ten times as long as any other rat species is interesting in and of itself. That is interesting that most rats die much sooner than mole rats do. But even within their average, 
even within, you say, they, they typically live 30 years or right around 30 years. What's most interesting is that a 30-year-old mole rat functions as well as an 18-year-old mole rat or a 5-year-old mole rat, right? I mean, that's, that's one of the things we want to get to, right? Irrespective of how long humans live, one of the things we want to get rid of is this final 5 to 10 years of deterioration, this, uh, right. this, this, this end game where we're just slowly falling apart and increasing the medical interventions and able to do less and there's less pleasure in life and there's much more medication in life. This, just this, yeah, this we whole, don't want to prolong that period of time. Right. We, 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 don't, want we to, don't want to prolong that. That would, be the, that, that would be the worst way to make people live longer. You know, add an extra yeah. decade of that, right, to say, well, we're not living to 75 anymore, we're living to 85. But basically from about 70 to 85, things, you know, things are not yeah, great. Yeah, you're, you're miserable because, no, no, that's not what we want to do at all. Right. And, I mean, if, uh, if people are going to live to 85, what we want is a person who's 85 to feel fantastic, right, or as good as possible right up until the end. <laughs> yeah, that, that, say you feel fantastic up until about 84, and then you feel, well, man, I'm, I'm lethargic. Uh, you know, yeah, and then you feel kind of tired. Year or so. yeah, yeah, that's what we want. And this particular animal, the naked mole rat, is a proof of concept to those who, who would say that you know we're engaging in wishful thinking or magical thinking with the, with the whole idea of aging research. Explain this guy then. You know, he's, it's a mammal, and it's not subject to these problems. And, you know, let's study this guy and uh, figure out what's going on there and see if, see if we can learn from it and duplicate. You know, some of, maybe some of the mechanisms that are, that are keeping this little guy alive. So Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Uh, it's a wonderful yeah. demonstration, a, a counter-argument to the idea that aging has to occur, and particularly that if by aging you mean deterioration has to occur. That, right. that, the, that, that the body has to start this long process of, of shutting down and falling apart. The mole rat says no. <laughs> the mole rat says yeah. that does not have to happen. And we, we knew that that was the case for some species. There are microorganisms or, or very simple species that appear not to age at all. Right? And there are things like trees that can go on forever, and aging doesn't really seem to be an issue for them. But those are... Those are yeah, tough analogies turtles. to they're, make. They're, you know, these, these sea turtles that live forever and ever, it seems like. Yeah, it, as turtles get a little closer, right? It's a little closer yeah. to draw an analogy between a turtle and a human being. But even that much closer to draw between a rat and a human being. I mean, it, right. it's not for nothing that mice and rats are typically what we do all this lab research on. They are enough like us in a lot of respects that drugs will be effective we can we can learn the effects of things introduced into their environment. We can look at that and say, okay, well, we can expect something similar possibly to happen to us if if that happens to them. They're close enough to us that we can at least draw some kind of rough parallels, some rough some rough conclusions. And the rough conclusion I draw here, looking at this one, is okay. Well, you know what? If they can do it, maybe there's a way we can do it. And it's <laughs> it's not it's not obvious what that would be. What I've seen so far doesn't go in great detail into what's happening with their telomeres, the way if you follow this link and read about the, the bowhead whale, this is some pretty good research. I mean, they're, they're talking at length about what's happening with the, with the telomeres yeah. and how they compare to us. Mole rats were really just looking at Google is playing it a little closer to the vest, aren't they? Well, I mean, what we, they know we've right now is, is how long they live, right? I mean, that's the, yeah. that's the data point they have, and that's what they're, that's what they're right. publishing. So I, I think there's a lot more... There's a lot more to be learned, and it might not, in the end, be something that can transfer across quite as easily or obviously. I mean, one of the interesting things about these these guys is they can survive up to 18 minutes without oxygen. And one of the researchers looking at this says it's entirely possible that it's their low oxygen environment that they live in that's, <laughs> that's making it possible for them to yeah. live so long. If you look at that, and you go, well, I don't know how we translate that to the human experience, right? I, I don't know how we. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we we all moved to uh, to Denver, Phil. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we all moved to the Andes, right? I mean, yeah. Let's get, yeah, perhaps so. Yeah, get get way up there, and and reduce the amount of oxygen we're we're breathing. But <laughs> but 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 you wonder about that. Is it? Oh, yeah, they're not breathing in as much, not permeating their cells. 
in that instance, you would then have to look at it and say, okay, well, what could we do that would replicate that effect for us? Because we're obviously not going to live in the mole rat environment. Yeah. Well, you know, we, 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 take, we take something for, that eliminates free radicals, right? I mean, that's, that's what we're talking about at that point. Uh, it's, uh, you know, that's, oxygen is the ultimate radical. It, it's a corrosive thing that we would depend on and we breathe. Right. And uh, take a look at what it does to your car. It rusts it. So it, the oxygen just is corrosive, but we have to have it. So. Yeah, yeah. If, if if you were to look at a well, so what's the CRISPR solution to aging based on the mole rats? It would have to be a pretty big overhaul of the human animal. That's for right. sure to make to, to right. make us like them. If if that's the reason, we don't. We, yeah, I think there's probably more to it. Than that's that. speculation. Yeah. That's right. We don't know that that's the yeah. case at all. That is one suggestion, and it, th- there is that interesting fact that they can hold their breath for 18 minutes. I, I think the longest a human being can hold their breath is significantly shorter than that. Gosh. Although, people who I guess people who do uh, those free dives and actually work on Guinness Book of World Records kind of breath holding, I don't know, they get somewhere in that 10 minutes. I think uh, the Guinness anywhere. Book of World Records no longer accepts the submissions of this sort because they don't want somebody to kill themselves. Right. But, I think, <laughs> but back uh, when people did it, I yeah. Think it, I, back in the 70s, somebody did it for something like in excess of 14 minutes, which is stupid. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So, uh, uh, But uh, I, would, I would suspect that the, uh, you know, the world-class uh, free divers probably you know, routinely uh, put in 10-minute 10, 10 dives. Again, that's crazy. <laughs> well, it is. Although, you know, one of the things we do talk about in more transhumanist terms is one of these one of these days we'll we'll have alterations about modifications either through nanotechnology or through things we do to our genes where we'll be able to hold our breath a lot longer. Respirocytes, a, you know. Yeah, I mean, the respirocytes we, might do it or or yeah. something else, something else that we do genetically might do it. But anyway, there could be a connection. There could be a connection between breathing less, interestingly, and living longer. Anyway, it's a very encouraging bit of research. It's great to see Calico coming out with something, and it's great to see that there's a mammal that doesn't age. So I'm wonderfully encouraged all the way around by the news of the mole rat, and I look forward to hearing a lot more about it in the years to come. We got one more animal, though. We we got got one one more animal animal because one more bit of animal news. These things don't just happen individually anymore. There's always something else going on. So here we've got the, I'm going to pronounce it axolotl, and I hope that's right. Axolotl. It's axolotl. Axolotl, thank you. The axolotl salamander, its genome has been sequenced, and this is interesting because these are creatures that regenerate, cut a limb off, they regrow the limb, cut the tail off, they regrow the tail, and we're now able to identify those regeneration genes. This Amazing. speaks yeah, to more than just living longer. This speaks to a whole different kind of approach to well, if, how an organism is. If, if we is. live indefinitely, Phil, if, uh, you know, if some of us don't manage to make it to age 70 with all our limbs, and so if we, if we can uh, live to age 1,000, then most of us at some point along the way will uh, lose a limb. Or right. lose a finger or something, right? So it, we need to be able to uh, regenerate limbs if if we're going to live as long as we would hope to, right? So very important research. The axolotl is it's a Mexican uh, amphibian, okay? But it, it's it's so it's such a bizarre animal. It doesn't it doesn't have a land stage like every other amphibian. I mean, that's almost part of the definition of what an amphibian is, right? It, Goes to right. the water, lays its eggs. The eggs, you know, have a kind of a tadpole stage. Then they come out on land and do their thing. And but not the axolotl. It, it maintains gills throughout its life. It, it almost looks like a giant tadpole. So it's unusual in a lot of ways. Learned that uh, in they were looking for it in the wild. And 2013, they uh, turned up zero in the wild. And oh, wow. uh, so. Yeah, it's 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 on the verge of extinction. Uh, the only known axolotls left are, are ones that are in captivity. Hope, uh, so you know, there you go. The ability to are... regenerate limbs does not protect you from extinction, sadly. And it, uh, apparently, it does not. And you know, and I, I would I would imagine that they are really susceptible to water pollution, right? Yeah, and th- Those guys are kind of in trouble in their native areas, apparently. So. Anyway, wish wish that wish that uh, species the best and uh, well, a great object a lesson there for us too, right? I mean, this right. is why we we want to go easy on the environment and not be driving species to extinction. 
here, yeah, here's. we might learn something from these things. Just think, we could have we could have driven the axolotl to extinction fifty years ago, and we that's wouldn't right. have them to study now, right? Yeah, that's so, right. And whatever whatever benefit, tremendous benefit, we may see in the future from having sequenced this genome and and learning how these regeneration genes work. And I think there's a lot of potential medical applications for that. In addition to in addition to regrowing limbs, I think about. You know, people born with birth defects, right, where the limb never right. grew right in the first place. It seems to me that there, there might be a there might be a treatment there for that. Also, that that principle might be applied to other parts of the body, not just the 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 big the big limbs. And there's just there's all kinds of possibility there. Like Kirk Douglas, glad the axolotl is still with us. Glad the still bull rat is around. Glad the bowhead whale exists. It's a wonderful world we live in with amazing biodiversity. And these animals in particular, I think, are going to, going to show us some wonderful things about our own lives. So look forward to learning more about that in the future. And with that, Stephen, I think we're just about done for a Monday. We're going to pick this all up on Wednesday. We've got a, another brand new show then. It's been great talking with you. It's been great having you all with us. And until next time, live to see it. Mm-hmm.